Hi everybody, welcome back to Gear Gossip. As I promised, the second or third part of my mini amp series here. Angle Gigmaster Mini Rectifier and tonight it's the Tube Meister. As you can see, things are evolving slowly. Still no door, no background, but first signs of audio treatment are showing up on the wall. Ha, back to business. I chose the 5 watt version of the Tube Meister and that's it. Most likely the only amp ever I will hold up into the camera. Maybe you can get a glimpse of two tubes in there. An input, master and gain a drive switch that will glow brightly red when engaged, a three-band EQ with my favorite setting by the way, and uh, oh no, the backside is upside down, which is a pity, no. Um, a mains in, a speaker out that accepts anything between 8 and 16, a power soak switch, the famous using cat in the red box is also built in here, so so it's obviously a tube amp meant for not exactly gigging, for practicing at low volumes or recording at low volumes. This power soak switch here is meant for silencing the speaker when it's connected. When it's not connected, the power soak is active all the time. Next feature, metal housing and two. My god, is this amp heavy, solid metal handles with Hughes and Kettner logos. Cool for uh, playing break workouts or punishing the bass player. I have to ask why do I get one of the lightest amps on the market with these elaborate handles here and anything that is heavy weighing about mm, four times as much as my dog comes with these rubber grips on top. Ugh. Also supplied is this Yorkshire Terrier sized carrying bag. Well, actually, I like the looks, I like the weight, and if we like the sound, we will check out. But before I do this, I have to mention the pricing. Um, if you remember the Mesa Boogie, this is made in the US, as far as I know. This one is designed and engineered in Germany, but manufactured in China. So if you compare two or more amps, we have to be honest. Uh, this one costs 350 euros, and I object it also costs 350 US dollars if you're living over there. The red box built in here costs 80 bucks alone, so it's very, very cheap. The Mesa Boogie costs a thousand bucks in the US, 1,250 euros over here, so it's 600 dollars more expensive in Germany. Unfair. I'm not the biggest fan of things made in China, slavery and anything connected with this. If this was made in Germany, it would be twice as much, but I would not mind, actually. Here we are with this thing plugged in with the same guitar and the same setting on my Palmer speaker simulator as on the Mesa Boogie review, so this is quite comparable. Everything here is set to 12 o'clock on the clean channel. <coughs> What you can see is that I had to turn up my preamp pretty much to get a signal at all. I'd say a very transparent, hollow sound a little bit. It's not a um, big, edgy and a mid-range hump, it's just... Almost a little bit on the hi-fi side. This is the neck pickup. In between. Telecaster in between. Hardly any sort of compression. Okay, and as I see, uh, the amp is very reactive on what you put into it. Because there's a big drop in output when I'm choosing a more trebly pickup. First I have to tell you something about the gain control, because um, the more you turn it up, the less effective the EQ gets and the more bass you get. Let me put it like this. Less gain, more master. Mm. 
little game, now vice versa. There's more meat to it. But I would still call this clean, so... We keep it like this for the moment and check out what treble can do. Turning up treble also reduces the bass. So interactivity here. So more treble. So that's an effective control, I guess. Mid-range, starting out at the middle. Oh, very good for further enhancing this hollow nature. And for another drop in volume. So you could say there's really something happening on the bass. Full bass, no bass. So much for the clean options. How much gain is in there? Uh oh. This is what the clean channel can do. again this overpowering nature of the neck. Less master. Somehow it keeps this sort of, I would call, hi-fi nature. <laughs> Using a 5 watt amp is a bliss, because you can crank it.
Change the mitts. Tell the guitar to be a humbucker. Extremely open hi-fi hollow thing here. I prefer it with single coils and I prefer it especially with a neck pickup. <coughs> Set the controls to 0 or 12 o'clock again and engage the drive switch. Ding! <coughs> well is this just me or do we have a lot more mid-range here? This is the bridge singer coil. Hamburger. Wow. I would call this very dense. A little bit on the hi-fi side still. Smooth and even distortion over the whole spectrum, but also lacking any sort of bite, the easy DC sort. Um, well, let's just check. Less gain, more master. Trouble. Looks like. Looks like the drive channel with little gain has much more bite than the clean channel. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, here we have serious gain kicking in. Chambaka. dense, very thick, but good for chords, but I'm still missing some sort of bite in here. Let's check with full gain, or even better. So this is all some sort of scoop setting. Well, 
that's the next single core. So it's sort of a split personality for me. It's never displaying too much bite or any, but it's never muddy. So I think this amp is excellent for anybody who is playing with a single core guitar and likes a lot of things in the, mm, I'd say, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, U2 or even the Beatles um, with the right guitar <coughs> and the right cap. Um, I've of course, I've checked this in the local store. Maybe it's not the best companion for my Palmer. Um, if you get a cap that has more bite, a little bit more yeah, grind to it. It's uh, close to perfect. Um, I really like this amp. <laughs> but it could use a little bit more of for me. The next thing we will check out here is, of course, the red box. Let's just settle for this one here. Thick neck pickup. Now we will switch over to the red box. <laughs> well, this is much more fizzy here. <laughs> and still less top end, less bite. <laughs> Like some sort of blanket over it. both red box and the palmer are not treated with eq or something like this so um it would be fair to do some sort of eqing but i do not do this in any case so the videos are comparable what's the end of it it's a cool amp for well practicing at home with a good tube sound it's already loud enough to annoy the neighbors believe me uh, as long as you're not in very clean mode, it's <laughs> still very loud. If somebody said 800 euros, <coughs> still a good thing. Um, but at 350, it's some sort of hard to beat for a recording solution at home. If you find something like this one in the store, feel free to check it out. Put it against the Mesa. Um, I think you really can compare these two or three amps, the Angle Kickmaster, the Mesa Boogie, and the Tube, uh, tube Singer, now the Tube Meister. Ah, if you want to do some comments down here and tell me what amp I should do next, what is the most interesting thing on the market at the moment. Um, the last thing to say is, again, a big thank you to BTM Guitars in Nuremberg who landed me this amp. Ha! And I will give back. Goodbye.